This week, the uh, on the back side of that sheet is the uh, is a little bit of the uh, outline. But I want to give you just a little uh, introduction. I'm going to spend a little time in Luke chapter 11. But first, I'm going to look in chapter 10. In chapter 10 of Luke, uh, Jesus uh, tells some uh, various things. uh, And it says in verse 40, on one occasion... Martha was extremely rushed and she was trying to get food together for the group. By the way, uh, Jesus had an understanding with Martha. Martha had told Jesus that anytime you're coming through this way, you have a standing invitation to come and rest at my house, stay with us, eat with us, and you're always welcome here. I have been around some church families that, uh, uh, as far as children go, or kids that are in the near area coming to college or whatever, that uh, they've always tried to make it a point to say, these certain people are always welcome at our house. And I'm going to tell you, it's, it's, it's nice to know that we are welcomed at a place We have a standing invitation. By the way, we have a standing invitation to be in heaven. And God wants us there. And he would like to provide for us for all eternity. Uh, But Martha, she was getting a little perplexed, verse 40 of Luke 10. And uh, she began to complain a little bit about her sister because it just did not seem like her sister was cooperating and helping out. You know, I'm the deaconess of this church, but there's other deaconesses. Where's the other deaconesses at? They should be helping me. You know how to, how much of a burden it is to put together the potluck. You know, Martha's in the kitchen right now working for us. She's wondering when we're going to come and eat it. She's got it almost ready. And you know what? Um, When I'm looking at this situation, Jesus looked to Martha. This is from the clear word. Jesus looked at Martha with understanding and said, Martha, Martha, you are helpful to everyone in need and you're going to great lengths to feed us and to make us comfortable. But there are more important things than food and comfort. Now, some of you might have missed breakfast and you're getting pretty hungry right now. And you may be wishing, oh, I wish I was in there at the fellowship lunch already. But Jesus says there are actually some things that are more important than food and comfort. Mary came to me because she recognizes her need. You see, Mary recognized a need that Jesus could feel that Martha did not quite notice. And it says she has done the right thing by coming here before me. And the things that I'm telling her will help her the rest of her life. Those of you that are hungry, it's only going to help you feel good for a little while you're going to get hungry again. But if you can take home something from God's word, it could last you your entire life. And it could mean the difference between eternal life, eternal damnation. So what Mary did was right. Now, one day right soon after that, Jesus was praying And as he was praying, some of the disciples noticed him praying. And, you know, they they noticed his habit of praying. And so, uh, you know, I get tickled sometimes. People look at this passage and and they look at sometimes and say, like, for instance, you go to, uh, forget I said this, you go to the Catholic Church and some of their liturgy type stuff. 
uh, you got the Lord's Prayer and then some of our people that go and visit there, they criticize them because they say, look at that, they don't even have all the prayer. They stop before they finish the prayer. Well, that's why, that's why I put on this sheet from Luke 11, verses 2 to 4, Jesus does not complete the prayer. You know why he doesn't complete the prayer? Once in a while, whenever you're instructing other people on what to do, you might stop and pause for a minute and tell them a little bit more about what to do. And so that's what Jesus did. It's recorded in, in, in both places, both in Matthew and Luke. But I, I'm telling you that Jesus had to stop and explain to them about his prayer. Here's something that they had not picked up on yet that Jesus wanted to make sure they got the point. You know, when some people pray, you know, praying, if you look at the, the word, it means to beg. I beg you, please, please do this for me. I beg you, I pray you that you'll do this. And sometimes when we're begging someone, if I'm begging someone that is mean, I might ask for a fish and they might give me a snake. That's what an evil person would do. I can remember one of the first times that I went fishing, went fishing with my dad and we went fishing at the back of our property. We had about 20 acres that was nothing but swampy land. It was right next to a, a, a river that was called Little River. And uh, they have a big lake on that little river now in, in Oklahoma. It has over 100 miles of shoreline. It's a big lake. And uh, Little River feeds into it and keeps that, that lake uh, flourishing okay. But Little River once in a while would get out of its banks. And whenever it would get out of its banks, sometimes what would happen, there would be a little overflow that didn't go back into the river. And so at the back of our property, we had kind of a swampy land. Some of you that have driven down Genesee this way, if you'll notice at, at times when it's rainy, if you look off to the right and to the left, you'll notice that some of that property there is underwater. Well, the back of our property was underwater all the time. And you know what was there in the water many times? Water moskins. And you know what I got one time whenever one of the first or second fish that I caught? It was not a fish. It was a water moxkin. You know, what, what do I do with a poisonous snake? They're very common in Oklahoma. What do I do with a poison? I don't, I didn't, I wasn't fishing to catch a snake. And you know what an evil person does? They give you something that you don't need, you don't desire, you wish you didn't have. And they think you, they've done you a good turn. God's not that way. So he goes on to say, also sometimes you might ask for an egg. Some of you like to eat eggs for breakfast. What would you think? Instead of an egg, you were handed a scorpion. That wouldn't be too good of an answer to prayer, would it? So Jesus says these words. He says, even evil people know how to give good gifts to their children that they love. Sometimes they don't give good gifts to others, but they know how to give good gifts to the ones that they really love. But he says, you know, our Heavenly Father knows exactly what you need and he knows how to give you the perfect gift. And you know what the perfect gift is? The perfect gift, as I see it, it says in verse 13, if you who are born in a sinful world know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more willing your heavenly Father is to give you the Holy Spirit when you ask him, it's time for us to ask that the Holy Spirit come in and fill us. You know, when the Holy Spirit comes in, we'll not only have comfort, 
but we'll be filled with God. And when we're filled with God, the wickedness is pushed out. And when the wickedness is pushed out, uh, what did I hear you guys say this morning? You needed to be what in church or what? Did I, did I hear somebody say something about being nice? See, that's what happens when the Holy Spirit comes in instead of giving a poisonous snake instead of a fish or a scorpion instead of an egg, you give something, you might give an egg that's a chocolate egg. You'll give something really wonderful. You'll, you'll give a, a gift that's even more than what you ever desired or the person ever desired. When you're nice, when you're filled with God's spirit, you're going to be looking out for others. And so uh, the point of our week of prayer this week has been steadfastness in prayer. And some of us, just like Jesus said, we do not have because we do not ask. And when we pray, Praise, rejoice, accept Jesus. Hey, Avery, I'm glad you're here. Amen. Accept Jesus. And when you accept Jesus, what do you say? Yes. Yes. You want to say yes? Yes. yes. By the way, I know you need the food. I can tell you're looking weary. Let's pray, then we can go eat. Father in heaven, thank you so very much for all you do for us. Today, it's a wonderful day having Clementine as a new member. It's a wonderful day having Andrew dedicated to you for all of his life. It's a wonderful day having debt cleared from our school building. It's a wonderful day being here in the house of the Lord on the Sabbath. It's a wonderful day, even though we might speak different languages, it's a wonderful day that we're here together and praising the Lord together because we're one in spirit. And the Holy Spirit is willing to come, willing to come to anyone who asks the Heavenly Father for Him. Oh, Holy Spirit, fall on us. Be in us. Use us this day. Bless us so that we may bless others. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.